Hi everyone, I'm Jody Shell with Grapeseed and I'm here today with my pal Jenny Bear to share some fun ideas that you might want to use at home with your sons and daughters as they're learning from home with you. So you may have gotten to the point where you're feeling like your children really need to get up from the kitchen table or up from the dining room or wherever it is that you're doing these distance learning activities um, to keep your sons and daughters engaged in learning. Um, you might get that feeling that they need to get up and moving. And so I want to reassure you that children's bodies are made to move. There's a lot of research out there between cognitive development or brain development and gross motor skills or, or moving around. And so if your child seems like they need to be up and moving and can't sit still for one more minute with this, please be reassured that that's very normal, natural part of their learning process is to be moving. So I have a couple of ideas that you might want to use that connect with literacy and um, learning words and so forth. So Jenny, I'm gonna put you down. And I'm going to share an idea that has to do with high frequency words. So those are those sight words that your children have maybe been learning at home. If you were to take um, a poem like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Row 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 Your Boat and wrote that poem down for your child to see, you would notice right away that there are lots of those high frequency words in poems and in books that you might have around the house or that you can um, look up poems online and so forth. So I'm going to show you an example from our grapeseed materials, but you can do this with other materials too, other poems. So this is one of our favorite poems and it's called Ostrich. And it says, an ostrich is a bird that cannot fly. You'll never see an ostrich in the sky. So you can see that this is a fun poem. Children are learning lots of neat things with this poem. Um, but there are lots of high frequency words in this poem, lots of those sight words. So what can you do with this to make it interactive so that your child is learning to read and practicing those sight words, but they're also getting up and moving? Well, here's one idea. You can take some of those sight words and write them down. I use post-it notes. You can use index cards. You can take sheets of regular typing paper or computer paper and tear them into quarters or um, you know into half whatever makes sense for you and write those words down you write those words down so that your child can easily read them and then you can do something like I did I just put it onto a little board that I happen to have or you can tape them around on a bare wall in your house in your child's bedroom um, and let them find those words with something fun like a flashlight or a fly swatter. So they're standing up, they're seeing all of these words that they are practicing reading and they found in the poem, and then they can go and swat that word as hard as they can so they're really getting that energy out and they're saying the word as they do. So is, not, see, that, can. They're just having lots of fun. It's just another way to get your child up and moving but practicing that skill of noticing those high frequency words um, in a really fun interactive way and of course if they were spread out all over a wall um, you know they could really be reaching and jumping and so forth another idea that you could do with the same words is to hide them around the house so you could let your child go on a little scavenger hunt I want you to find all of the times that I wrote the word can, and maybe you have the word can written on four or five different pieces of little paper, and they need to go around the house and find can, and then they can find that, and then they can find C. And so you're sending them out running around, they're looking for things, they're having a lot of fun, they're collecting those um, words and bringing them back to you. And so that can be a great way to, again, get your child up and moving, they're practicing some of the words from their poem, but they're doing it in a really fun, interactive way rather than just pointing um, within the text of the poem. So that's an idea. Another great idea for getting your child up and moving, and I'm gonna use these same words as the platform for this idea, is that you can do something like let them do jumping jacks to spell the words. So first they're gonna do C, so they'll do those jumping jacks, S, E, E, C, okay, now do the same thing with Ann, A, N, Ann, and on and on. So they're jumping. You could use a jump rope for that. If your child likes to jump rope or if they have a little trampoline or something, 
you know, you can make this really fun for your child. So they're practicing maybe their spelling words or their sight words and doing it in a really, really fun, interactive way. Again, they're not just sitting there in front of the computer or sitting at the table um, again and again, but they have the opportunity to move their bodies. If you happen to have sidewalk chalk around, you could go outside and you could make sort of a hopscotch with the high frequency words that happen to be in a poem. Again, same example, doesn't have to be something um, different every single time, but you could have your little path of hopscotch with the high frequency words and they have to um, hop to those different words instead of numbers. So that's another thought. Um, so there is so much that you can do to get your son or daughter up and moving. Another idea is practicing um, comparisons, so with action. And here's a fun one. We happen to have an action activity within each of our grapeseed units. And so this one happens to be called Let's Climb. So it says, this is how monkeys climb. Let's climb, 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 and stop. So maybe you and your child could make a list of animals and how they move and then ask your child to do those movements. Hop like a rabbit, jump like a kangaroo, fly like a bird, maybe swim like a fish or swim like a shark or swim like a whale. And then your child is doing these activities all around the house, but they've then first generated a list of animals with you. They've generated a list of how those animals move, and then they're actually performing those actions. So again, they're engaging their large motor skills and really getting that pent up energy out. Um, so those are just some fun tips and I'll get my pal Jenny again. We hope that you're able to use some of these tips. Maybe that gave you some other ideas for ways that you can make learning fun, do those activities with your children, but remember you can do them in a really fun, interactive and engaging way. And so keep on doing the best that you can do parents and we appreciate what you're doing with your sons and daughters as they learn from home. Thanks for everything and take good care.